All right, so before I get into this video, let me give you a backstory real quick. A while back, I tweeted out wondering if I should put my R9 390 in Junkrat to test the concept of bottlenecking when it comes to CPUs. Good idea, right? Well, it was a lot harder to pull it off than I thought. First issue, the power supply I have in Junkrat is not enough wattage at only 400 watts. But don't worry, I have a 700 watt OCZ unit lying around from another system that I could use. Or so I thought. After installing the power supply, the PC would not post at all, and at this point, I was beyond frustrated because I did not know what other options I had. So I decided to take all the parts out of the case and work on it in a test bench style to see if there were some points in the case possibly shorting out a connection. I don't know, I was kind of about ideas and I just wanted to try to see if this would make it work. After some testing, I came to the conclusion that this power supply just wouldn't work. The one Junkrat had wasn't good enough because it didn't have enough wattage, so it's either down to going to Best Buy and spending a fortune on a power supply, or stripping my PC of its 500 watt power supply. Long story short, I am using my personal rigs power supply, a Corsair CX500, to power this system for testing. So bottlenecking, it's a term that's used in the PC universe referring to the weakest point in a system that holds back the system as a whole from performing to its fullest potential. So what am I testing exactly? Well picture this, you have a PC like Junkrat, a hand-me-down PC with a crappy graphics card and maybe a higher wattage power supply than I was given in my system, and you come across a deal on a high-end GPU like an R9 390. Would it be a legitimate upgrade? Or would the CPU be too much of a bottleneck in the system, in our case, using the Intel Core 2 Duo E7500? The testing methodology we will be using in this video includes the following. We will be testing the same games at the same settings between the R9 390 and my own personal rig with an i7-3770K to represent a best case scenario that I can bring of little bottlenecking from the CPU and compare those results to the same R9 390 with the same games in the same settings in Junkrat with an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 CPU. Both CPUs are at stock frequency for testing purposes. I would overclock the Core 2 Duo if I had a board that supported it, but since I can't, it's only fair that the i7 is at a stock frequency as well. The i7-3770K comes in at a base clock of 3.5GHz, and the Core 2 Duo comes in at 29 There is a gap there, but again, this is a test based on a scenario, as I mentioned, not just an apples to apples comparison. As for the games, we will be testing Overwatch, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Metro Last Light, Team Fortress 2, Skyrim, and Rust. These titles are a blend of light mainstream titles and a few more demanding ones. All tests are done at 1080p and the same driver version, 16.7.3, and the R9 390's core clock is set to 1015MHz across all tests. Now without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. Well, if you were a non-believer of bottlenecking being a significant factor when shopping for PC hardware before, there is really no reason you still should be. The R9 390 is severely limited being paired with the Core 2 Duo. Stuttering is a huge issue with a bunch of drop frames. The CPU just cannot keep up with this graphics card. That being said, an overclock could fix some of these issues, but in this scenario, when you are upgrading a hand-me-down system that most likely doesn't have a board that's overclockable, 
I would advise you upgrade the CPU first and use whatever leftover money you have to buy the best dedicated GPU that you can. Overall, this testing really got me thinking about the concept of bottlenecking and what other parts could be a factor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like, and if you loved it, I would greatly appreciate you hitting that sub button to stay notified when we create more content like this. You all seem to love this style of content, so I plan to keep pumping them out. I have a few more ideas up my sleeve. Thanks again, guys, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.